Hello, this is the G-Man of EAP because my opinion is just that interesting. After the Bill Nye Ken Ham debate, uh, a journalist or a writer, whatever you want to call him, on BuzzFeed asked a couple of attendants uh, at the debate if they had a chance to ask Bill Nye some questions, what would they ask him? And one of the questions that gets circulated a lot on the internet, especially around Facebook, is this uh, person there asking Bill Nye whether or not the second law of thermodynamics somehow disproves evolution. Once again, this hurts in my very core the complete scientific illiteracy that is expressed right here. And it's not just this person too. A lot of people seem to think that somehow this one isolated law disproves an entire field of science. When the reality is this law has very little to do with evolution and in biology in general. If you're not familiar with the second law of thermodynamics, here it is. I'll put some more information uh, up down there if you want to read more about it. Um, a major aspect of the laws of thermodynamics have to do with systems being a closed system. And the reality of the matter is Earth and the organisms on Earth are not in a closed system. Organisms interact with each other all the time. Chemical interactions interact with each other all the time. Most importantly though, things on the Earth are affected by the sun, which in itself is a chemical reaction. So nothing on Earth is in a closed system. So while the second law of, of thermodynamics and all the laws of thermodynamics, all three, are laws of, of, of energy and heat, they don't lord over entire theories of science. A law does not supersede or lord over a theory. A theory is a collection of information. And just when people claim that somehow one law disproves an entire field of science is, is, is it shows a, a huge misunderstanding of the way science works. Laws can't be so willy-nilly mixed matched in science. For instance, you wouldn't use um, Heisenberg's uh, improbability principle to determine the movements of the planets because that only works on a quantum level. For the movements of the planets, use Newton's laws. A theory is a book, and the laws are the chapters. But most importantly, do you really think people would be so stupid as to craft an entire field of science, completely ignoring one law? This idea that somehow evolution was created, you know, just out of thin air, and and that all the evolutionary scientists who have worked on it are completely either oblivious to the second law of thermodynamics or are creating this theory in spite of it. They're aware of it, okay? Of course they are. All these other scientific theories are, are very well aware of this, these laws of thermodynamics and they work in harmony with heat and on a minute level, sure, plays into the way everything works, but it doesn't lord over variation of species, genetic mutations, adaptations, natural and sexual selections and things like that. Those things are the things that drive evolution. It just kind of hurts to know that this incredibly inaccurate idea is perpetrated, uh, is, 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 is used so often by people when they try to discredit evolution. If you want to discredit evolution, if you want to somehow prove it wrong, be my guest. That's the greatest thing about science is that it encourages scrutiny. And when something has passed through scrutiny, it stands as the best model that we currently can muster as our ways to describe the natural world. And so if you want to try to dismantle evolution, go at it. But you're going to actually have to use the actual sciences. That's all I got. This is the G-Man of EAP signing off. I will see you next time.